Hi everyone, welcome to Writing 121 Online for Fall 2020. My name is Steve Krause. I'm a professor teaching this class. And I'm going to share with you in this video just a couple of highlights from the syllabus and the schedule and the way that Canvas is laid out. Um, I assume that you're going to read over the details of the syllabus and if you have questions about anything that you'll ask them below. So I'll try to keep this as short as I can. Okay, let's go. Okay, when you log in to Canvas and come to our course, you should see something that looks a lot like this. Um, I'm looking at this on Chrome, so it might look a little bit different depending on what your browser is. I'm going to click here where it says Syllabus, and just the, this is indeed the syllabus for the class, the sort of rules uh, of things as we we'll go along. Um, my name is Steve Krause. It, most people pronounce it Krause. My friend pronounces it Krause. Don't ask me why. It's just the way that it is. Easiest way to get a hold of me is by email. My office phone is going to be pretty useless this semester because I don't really anticipate being up there at all. And I'll be holding office hours either through Zoom or Google Hangouts. More details on that once I figure it out. The beginning here is a description of what 121 is for and like uh, from the programmer's perspective. This section of 121 is a little bit unusual because it's specifically designed for students who didn't take the class when they were a first year student. Sometimes it's because they thought they didn't need to take it, sometimes it's because they forgot, sometimes it's because they were a transfer student. Whatever your reasons are, that's one of the reasons why this special section is designed for students who are not freshmen. But I do want to remind you that this is a freshman level course. So if there's some parts of it that seem a little something you could have covered before, that's because it probably was, and maybe you should have taken the class when you were a freshman. But we're all in this together now, and we'll proceed together um, from here on out. So you can read these sort of descriptions and outcomes on your own. Uh, reading materials are all going to be provided electronically, and the only other thing that you really need as far as supplies goes is a uh, EMU Google account for both your email and the other activities of the class. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the nature of the online format of the class. There's a lot of online classes this fall at EMU because of the pandemic that we're in the midst of, but our course has always been scheduled to be online. Asynchronous, which means that we're not going to have any set class time meeting where we'll all be logged into Zoom or something at the same time. But there are some specific implications of the online format that I want to highlight. The first one is, is that you actually have to participate in the class throughout the week. The, uh, it's not a self-study class, it's not a self-paced class. Um, writing is something you learn with other people. Other people have to read your writing, other people have to comment on your writing, you're going to discuss readings with other people, so you can't just do it all on your own. At a minimum, you have to participate twice a week between Monday and Wednesday and Wednesday and Friday, but as we'll talk about in a second, you'll want to participate a lot more than that. Um, the other thing about the online format is that um, it requires a certain amount of responsibility on your part because of the distance and the sort of not same timeness of it. So uh, I want to hit a couple of those highlights as I talk about it in the online format part. First is that you're going to be using your Google account quite extensively, so if you haven't started using that much yet, uh, here's going to be your chance. The second and third point are really key, actually, which is you have to check your EMU email account every single day. Every single day least once. Um, if you don't regularly use your EMU email, you can set up your EMU, account, EMU email account so it forwards to whatever email you use. If you're used to just looking at your phone for text messages, you can set up your phone to read your EMU email on your phone. There's lots of ways to do this. There's no excuse to not do this. And you got to understand why this is important. EMU email is the only way I have to communicate with you about things that might come up in the class, about an assignment that you missed, about something that went wrong, or anything like that. So you have to check your email, email account every single day. Under no circumstances will I accept as an excuse, oh, I just didn't check my email for missing an assignment or missing some other sort of um, notification I'm trying to give you, and I'll penalize you as appropriate. So make sure you check your email, email account every day. This may seem kind of like an odd thing to highlight, but it happens. You need to actually have a computer. I've had students before who try to 
completed an online class with just a tablet device or a phone, and that's not going to work very well. You obviously have to be somewhat comfortable with the technology. I think most people are, and if you have questions about it, let me know. But the other thing I want to highlight is, is that under no circumstances will I accept a lack of internet access as an excuse for not getting work done. So there's unforeseen circumstances that we can talk about in terms of making up work and things like that, like if there's a big storm, the internet goes out or whatever. But um, you got to make sure that you're going to have that computer for the entire semester. If you have a significant other who has the computer and then they move out, and they take the computer with them, you're going to need to figure out um, how to get a computer, something like that. Okay, let me hit a couple of highlights about the online discussion and conferencing. That's worth 200 points for the class. This is the part that replaces our face-to-face -face discussions um, that we would have if we were meeting face-to-face. -face. Here's how it's basically going to work. First thing you need to do is actually do the reading. I will start most of the discussions off with some kind of introductory comment. It'll be on, I'll show you this when I look at the uh, calendar of events on uh, Canvas. But you, you'll look at these uh, introductory discussions, read the, com read, the, read the reading, and then you'll make a post. And when you, when you first make a, your first post, you won't be able to see other people's posts until you make your own post. So when you log in and don't see anybody else's comments, that's normal, okay? Then you post about the uh, reading and the form of discussions, you know, what questions you have, comments, thoughts, reactions, stuff like that. You're not trying to write a mini report. They don't have to be very long. You know, 150 words is fine, but you don't want to be too short, like just saying, yeah, that's a great idea or something like that. Um, they don't have to be great, finely wordsmith prose, but, you know, you want to have, like, normal spelling and complete sentences and that kind of stuff. The most important part of these discussions is the timeliness of it. The discussions begin on Monday and end on Wednesday, or begin on Wednesday and end on Friday. If you wait past the beginning point, then we can't really have a good discussion. So the way that I grade discussions is that if your initial post is on time, either Monday or Wednesday typically, and you respond to at least more than one, more than one, at least two of your other classmates on at least two different days, so you can re respond to two classmates on one day, if that makes sense. Then you get an A for that part of discussion. If you your post late, but you respond to two people, um, or your initial post is on time, but you only respond to one person, um, then you get a B and so forth. Okay, um, it's. Participation discussion is worth 200 points total for the class, 100 points for each half the semester. So, and the way that I calculate it is, is that I will calculate the grade, and the grade point, because I assign letter grades for these, and then convert it into a letter grade, come up with an average, and give you um, a grade that's a percentage. You'll see what I mean when we get to it. The other part of this that I want to highlight is the one-on-one -on -one conferences. You and I will be meeting individually twice, at least, during the semester to talk about your research projects. These are on the calendar. And um, these are discussions that, first off, we'll probably use uh, Zoom to facilitate these. They'll probably be about 15, 20 minutes each. And you need to participate in this. And you first, what you need to do is you need to actually um, get back with me about scheduling one of these conference meetings and within 48 hours of when the scheduling process starts. And then, of course, you actually need to show up and meet with me um, during the scheduled conference time. We'll also be doing a lot of peer review. Uh, peer review is basically looking at each other's drafts. And I like to give a little bit of credit for specifically successful peer review. So throughout the semester, that's worth a total of 100 points. Okay, most of the class is obviously the writing projects, the writing project portfolio. It's a writing class, and we'll talk about this in a great more detail um, as we go along. I just want to highlight a couple of things for now. First off, this is not a class where there's one big, huge research paper. There's a lot of writing classes like that that are, that are like that. This is not one of them. Rather, there's a whole series of smaller papers, smaller projects, and you can see... Um, those described at least a little bit briefly there. And we'll talk more about those details as we go along. There's three major parts or portfolios. The first part is the getting started portfolio, which is about getting started. 
the part that's probably the meatiest part of the, uh, the writing portfolio is the middle part, the academic research portfolio. And that's where you get closest to writing something that actually looks like a research paper. And then the last project is the research transform portfolio where you try to represent your research to an audience beyond the class. MLA or APA style, we'll talk a little bit more about that's fine. I am against late work. Um, if you're, if the only exception I will give to not penalizing you for late work is if you let me know before something is due that you're going to be late with it, and if it's a good reason, I'll usually give you a break on that. In order to pass the course, you have to turn in all parts of the portfolio, regardless of any of the grade that you are getting. So in other words, you can't just, you know, skip the short critique essay or the research presentation poster or something like that and expect to pass the class. The grading sale is pretty straightforward. Um, thousand points total for the class and this is the how it breaks down. I usually round up based on um, participation. Um, I wanted to say, uh, end with uh, uh, with this part at least, <laughs> not end because I'm gonna go back on the calendar and say it, but I wanna end the part of the syllabus with uh, mentioning um, two other things. The first thing is, is that we are in a very strange moment right now, historically, um, in terms of this pandemic. And uh, this has obviously impacted us as people and students and teachers and just everything, you know, dramatically. I mean, I, I'm going to be, uh, well, I turned 55 in 2000 next year. I just turned 20 and 54. You get to my age, you kind of forget. And I remember having a discussion with my father about this when the pandemic started, and neither one of us could think of any other event that even comes close to this in our lives as far as um, historical significance and dramatic change to where our life is. So, you know, this is the backdrop that we're going, that is it exists throughout this class. I don't want to necessarily focus on that because I would think that this class would works best as an escape from some of those things but I think it's I think it's key that we acknowledge that that's part of what's going on here so that's what I mean by a few thoughts about that I also talk here a little bit about plagiarism don't do plagiar don't plagiarize and I also talk about some other various campus resources there's all kinds of different support mechanisms for you on campus both in terms of study stuff in terms of psychological stuff in terms of of food assistance in terms of um, you know uh, sexual assault issues you name it affirmative action issues um, so if you have any questions about any of that stuff um, and you need any of those kinds of I think you might need any of those sorts of resources I'm not saying I'm the one who can help you solve those problems but I can probably point you to somebody who can okay let me wrap up by going back to the main home page and just give you a little bit of a tour of some of the navigation here so you'll notice that all I have set up over here is syllabus the grade book people in zoom I don't do modules and what I'm really trying to encourage and really require you to do is this page right here the one with the road sign on it that is the starting point and the map for the entire course okay so I have the semester all roughed out here. You'll notice that there's links for the first eh, five weeks. I guess we get into six weeks or so. And actually, further than that. But some of these links are uh, less accurate than others, and some of these things will be changed. Um, but I can assure you that the first couple of weeks are totally fine. This is where you are. You clicked on that. The next thing you're going to do is introduce yourself to me uh, and your peers. And the way this looks is you'll come to this. And you'll see there's no other comments there you're, because that's how it works. When you first come to a, um, a new discussion, you won't see anybody else's comments until or anybody else's posts until you make a post. So you make a post right here, tell us about yourself, and uh, if you can uh, attach um, a picture or a video of yourself, if you can, you'll read over the assignment, okay? And that's kind of how the class progresses. So, for example, this is the what we're doing for August 31st. That's the first day, August 31st through September 2nd. That's um, the Monday through Wednesday. When it says required and graded discussion, that means it's required and graded. And you can see both of those discussions there. Then we'll have some other readings and discussions like this one, where this is actually a discussion about getting started. It's actually not open yet. It's not available to you until... September 4th, 
Um, but the point is, is that that's a discussion that's not required, but you're going to want, you don't have to post to it, but you will want to read it because it describes what the assignments are, okay? So you'll post, so again, to get it, what you're going to want to do is get to these discussions here, these two discussions in the, right here by September 2nd. You'll want to get to take a Labor Day off, get to these required discussions here by September 8th and read over this stuff and so forth, okay? Major dates to keep in mind. Um, this could change, but this will probably stay the same. We spent a lot of time in the getting started portfolio because the hardest part of research writing is figuring out what you're going to write about and begin some of your research. So there's a lot of work that happens here. So the first major portfolio is really the half the halfway through the semester. Then things speed up quite a bit because by then you will have done quite a bit more research and the projects will become a little bit easier to you. The major uh, academic research portfolio will be due November 18th, right before Thanksgiving. And then right after Thanksgiving, we, we go sort of a uh, gentle downhill slope in terms of the last portfolio with the research transform portfolio. And as you'll see, the work lightens up quite a bit towards the end of the school year. Okay, that's probably more detail than you'll want or need, but again, it. I just want to cover, uh, there's a lot of material to cover right at the very beginning, and make sure we're all on the same page. Um, I guarantee you that is the longest video I'll be sharing with you this entire semester. If you have any questions, if there's anything you want to know more about the syllabus, is there stuff I didn't cover, whatever, there's a discussion right below this one. So that's where you should post those questions. Post your questions here, and then introduce yourself on that other discussion and you'll, once you post about yourself, you'll see the introduction that I gave about myself, and you can you comment on that and comment on others as well, okay? It's gonna be fun. Uh, we're gonna have a good semester. This class is going to um, be interesting and challenging, and, um, and we'll make it through together. It'll be good. All right, I'll see you online.